Hello, hello everybody. This is Elissa from Mink Arts and Crafts and today we are doing a whip and chat. So whip stands for work in progress chat. We're going to sit here, chat, talk a little bit about this canvas and this kit and what I am working on today. Uh, so today's whip and chat, I am working, I haven't put it in my logbook yet. I am working on Familiar Magic. This is by the artist Chris Abeg from Diamond Art Club. And uh, my sticker, as you can see, I have not logged it into my logbook as the current whip. Uh, so I have not put my sticker in my logbook yet. So here you get to see this is what I'm working on. Uh, this cute, adorable image right here I am doing for the Chris Abug Along hosted by the Stealthy Crafter over on uh, Instagram and YouTube. I am is a round drill canvas. I needed a round in my life. Uh, that would be lots of color blocking. So I had to go with this. Uh, it is a 55.8 by 70.6 uh round drill canvas and oh my goodness I am loving it I, I just did this whole section earlier this evening and now I am about to roll into and do this start the second section and it is going so fast so wonderful loving it uh I am using this beautiful like I think this is like a mermaid color but it's like one of those that shade fades from color to color um Bella Ardina Cold Trade because that's like my go-to uh, I'm still on this mahogany coconut wee wax because I love it. And I just put a uh, Hot Cocoa Pure Bliss Wax Company uh, Diamond Dotter Dot Putty. Uh, so that's my first time using the Pure Bliss uh, Putty uh, is the putty that I'm using. My first time using it. And the two pens that I have to use are both from Leopard Leatherworks. I have one with my um, regular that I use primarily for rounds uh, depending on what I'm in the mood for. And then this one that I'm using for squares uh, or, you know, depending on what I'm in the mood for. But these are the two uh, pens that I'm using, both from Leopard Leatherworks. And I believe I got both, um, I'm trying to remember, I know, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to, I think I got both of them just straight up from Leopard Leatherworks, uh, wherever they sourced their uh, blanks from is up to them. But I love, 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 love the metallics of this one. And then you've got the creaminess of this one. So we are going to go ahead and dive into it. Let's see what color do I want to start with. I always do things a little differently when I'm doing the whip and chats. Normally I would pick a color over here and start and work from like left to right. Let's go ahead and turn that overhead off so we get rid of that glare. And we are going to dive right in. What do we want to do? Because <laughs> I normally work this way because that annoys me working this way. But I kind of end up starting because of the where my camera uh, is and where the light ring is, I kind of can't really work this way very well. It throws me off. So I end up doing some a little bit different than my normal routine, but we will see. I'm going to pick a color. I think I still am going to go with the background. I'm feeling the background vibes this morning or this evening. I don't even know what time of day it is. This time, this, this, whatever it is right now, I'm feeling the background vibes still. So how is everybody's day going? I hope you are weekend or whatever it is for you. I hope you guys are having an enjoyable uh, time, wonderful everything, all of that fun because, you know, things are as they are. Uh, let's see. I, while I, while you guys are watching this, I will be actually at work again. Yay. If you guys are watching it on Saturday. I will be back at work. Lovely. 24 hour shifts at the hospital. Woohoo, so much fun. Didn't pick up that drill very well. I kind of got an offset drill picking up on that one. I'm going to do these bottom ones right here of this color because there's not very many. I think this little tiny section right here is all that there is of this color of drill in the entirety of the canvas. So I'm going to knock them out while I can. So what was my week like? Uh, well, let's see. I left off last week. I had mentioned that I had duty on Sunday, one of my 24-hour shifts on Sunday. So I had that on Sunday. Uh, and then, which the day went really well because it was not too bad because uh, it was Easter Sunday. So we didn't get any real, nothing really happened because everybody was, you know, at home enjoying Easter Sunday. Uh, and then I proceeded to try to sleep and that, that's where I had issues because I'm sleeping in my office at the hospital, um, which is a patient treatment table, a physical therapy clinic patient treatment table. 
uh, that I have like a memory foam mattress, camping mattress topper on top of to kind of like make it a little bit more user friendly and a little bit more comfortable to sleep on because it's not comfortable to sleep on. And I couldn't sleep. The clock is ticking away and ticking away. Uh, and next thing I know, I'm like, okay, I've literally been laying in this bed or while laying on this treatment table slash bed until literally laid there until um, I got up Monday morning to get ready for the day to start my actual regular day on Monday of seeing patients. So yeah, I literally did not sleep at all on Monday, on Sunday night leading into Monday. So that made it for a uh, another one of those long Mondays of seeing patients with no sleep at all. So that was fun. Uh, Tuesday, I think I had some meetings on Tuesday that I had to go to. Uh, but Monday night, I, so I went home, went home on Monday, and I was like, okay, hopefully I should be, I'm like so exhausted, I should be able to get a normal night's sleep. No, Monday night I was wide awake until like 2.30 in the morning. And I'm like, why am I like not sleeping? Come on, I should be able to sleep by now. I'm so sleep deprived. I should be able to sleep by now. No, I was wide awake until like 2 or 3 in the morning, <laughs> Monday night. Uh, finally fell asleep, got up, went to work, worked on Tuesday. And then Tuesday on my way home from work, I think I left work. Uh, it was almost five o'clock when I left work. I'm driving home from work. Uh, and mind you, I'm putting to, I had to, I've been putting together this project. So I was doing all these PowerPoints and everything. So I stayed a little late to work on the, the presentation, um, in the PowerPoint that I had to put together for the project that I'm, uh, in charge of. So I was, had stayed a little late to do that. Normally I try to get out of four. It doesn't, doesn't normally happen. Um, but I'm like a block and a half away from my, maybe like two, two or three roads down from, no, I was only like two, two turns down from my house or two roads down from my house. And these are like small, like, you know, subdivision roads. So they're like small blocks and I'm on the main drag that has like no stop signs. And then this car comes from the side street, which has a stop sign on each side. So if this is the main drag, the stop sign is here and here. It's kind of at a weird angle. I'm just cruising along, going like five under the speed limit because I know I'm going to be turning right up here and I'm like down here. I'm cruising along and then this car like kind of comes out and I'm thinking, okay, they're going to pull out in front of me because usually people come come out and they're then they turn into the straight lane. So I'm like, okay, they're going to pull out their accelerate and go that way. But no, this car pulls out very slowly and stays and it's like doesn't accelerate and it's just like crossing the road. And I'm driving like this. And I'm like, I can't go that way because the car is coming from the crossroad, which is at a diagonal. So I can't go that way because of the way the car is. Um, so it's like, I can't go left to get out of the way. I can only go to the right. So I'm like slamming on the brakes, honking the horn, turning my car to the right to try to avoid hitting this goofus kid that's not, that didn't see me as I'm driving down the main drag, which is a straight road. Uh, and I'm like, and then like my car, as I like his back tire, like kissed my bumper and my car and hit my car and threw me off onto the curb, comp off over the curb onto the, uh, rest completely. And I was just like, okay. Uh, so I'm like at a complete stop and I'm watching as this car, like he drives another block and a half before he completely stops. And I'm like, at first I was like, is this guy even going to stop? Is this car even going to come to a complete stop? Like, like, I, I literally thought he was going to keep driving and just drive away and not stop at all. Like, I literally thought that's what was going to happen. Um, because it took him so long to actually come to a stop. Um, like, <laughs> that was literally what was going through my head. So I have officially now had my first ever car accident. Um, took me, what, 36 years to have a car accident? Like, I've made it that long in my life. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, no injuries or anything like that. It 
but my poor car has like a, it's not even major damage on my car but I'm like my poor car has like this beat up bumper and a bent up uh like fender -y thing there's like I would have I have to replace like I have to get the entire bumper um replaced and the panel behind the bumper because of the damage that happened to it um but so of course the kid like get out of the car uh like I pulled over to the side of the road get out of the car well I didn't pull over to the side of the road I've like pushed off onto the curb over this tall like 18 inch tall curb um and I get out of my car um the kid eventually stops and gets out of his car and is like are you all right I'm like yep yeah. he's like what do you do he's like what do we do what do we do and I'm like we call the cops we call we call the non-emergency number to report an accident so he's like and then we call the insurance companies and let them know that there was an accident and blah 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 and he was like and he was just like all frazzled and everything so I go pull out my phone and I pull like search I'm like okay let me go ahead and search our city non-emergency um phone number for the police so that way I can call the dispatcher and like, you know, report the accident and all of that stuff. So I do that, call the dispatcher, give my name, where I'm at, all the information, and <laughs> do the report uh, for it. And um, then once I get in, they're like, okay, we'll go ahead and dispatch a patrolman to you. And I'm like, okay, perfect. Um, and while we're, we're waiting for the patrolman, I get a cop, we get photos of I take like my photos of his car, my car, his uh, driver's license, his insurance, his registration, get copies of everything uh, from his information, wait for the trooper to get there. Uh, I think it took about like 35, 40 minutes for the trooper to get there. But I mean, the they're coming from like 15, 20 minutes away is where the... Um, where they're coming from uh, to get to us if they weren't already out on a call somewhere else. So they get there, take our statements, look at the vehicles, explain what happened, blah, blah, blah. And the kid is just like, I didn't even see you. I didn't even notice you were there, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yep. And the trooper's like, were you wearing your ass? He's like, you wear your seatbelt? And I'm like, yep. How fast were you going? I'm like, maybe 40, 42. It was a 45. But I'm like, I'm almost home, so I'm like, I'm not, I never speed up all the way on that road because I'm almost home. And there's no point in speeding up when I'm just going to have to slow right back down again because I'm not on that road for very long. Um, but, and so I'm like, yeah, 40, 42. It's like, you're wearing your seatbelt? So I'm like, yep. Uh, using a cell phone, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, nope, hands-free. Cell phone on the thingy on my dash, hands-free. Uh, all of that stuff. And... Uh, gave my, um, my spiel for it and everything. Uh, he gave us his, uh, the, the, what is it? The incident number. And then we went ahead and gave us the incident number. And then like, we were good to go, cleared to go, all of that stuff. Uh, so I went ahead and started the process of, you know, filing a claim with my insurance company that night. Uh, they make you do it all online now. So I had to do like the initial stuff online. So then Wednesday when I'm at work uh, is when I get like my insurance company, like Wednesday morning, my insurance company called me at like 1030 in the morning to get my actual recorded statement. Thankfully, I had had like a cancellation, patient cancellation or no show or something like that. So I actually had like the downtime to actually when they called to answer the phone and actually do the recorded statement right then and there. So I gave my statement and did everything and based off of the fact that, and they, they told me right then and there, they were like, yeah, you are not liable because you were on the main road with the right of way. And uh, cause I, I'd already uploaded photos of the car and I went ahead and uploaded the ones of like the other person's insurance and everything else. They were like, yeah, you are not liable. Uh, we deem you not liable for the accident. So nothing against me because the other car failed to yield to, uh, um, failed to yield to um, basically 
the traffic that had the right of way um because I had the right of way because I didn't have a stop sign uh and didn't slow down didn't yield to um the traffic that had the right of way or whatever the phrase that they used for it or whatever and yeah so <laughs> now I get to go through that whole process of getting my car fixed but then the fun thing, like I was getting ready to leave, I had literally walked out to my car and as I was climbing in my car, the other party's insurance company calls me to get my statement and everything. So I do give the whole statement spiel, blah, 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 blah. And then they, they do it. And it was like their insurance company, which is like one of the most common, like big names that you see advertised everywhere. It was like, they were so, like I, it was so hard to hear what they were saying on the phone because you could hear like four other conversations going on in the background at the same exact time. Like four other people giving claims or talking or whatnot at the same time. And you're like, okay, this is like, you shouldn't, you should have better quality if you're calling people like this. Because for me as like, you know, granted you're not my insurance company, but still it's not very professional to be calling somebody to take like a claims, wit like claim statement and having, you know, where I can hear somebody else giving their statement at the same time that I'm trying to give mine. That just doesn't, no, that's not how it's supposed to be. Like that's, mm, I think something, no, not very like professional in that aspect. Um, but so I did that. That was my Wednesday. Thursday was a long, a long day at the clinic, relatively long day at the clinic. And then, thir yeah, Thursday evening, I'm, like, laying in, like, chilling in bed, kind of just relaxing. And I get a phone call from the other insurance company again, the uh, the other party's insurance company. And they were, like, and it was basically, it was this, like, really short, brisk call. And it was basically, because, you know, other insurance companies for guilty parties don't want to pay out any money because, you know, they don't want to pay. And they were, like... We've decided that we are not liable for the this because we've ruled that because the damage to your car was on the front left of your car and on our parties, it was the back right, that we are not liable for the damages to your car. And I was like, Okay, I disagree with that statement and my insurance company disagrees with that statement and has deemed me not liable for it because of blah blah because your driver failed to yield to, you know, traffic that had the right of way uh, or yield to oncoming traffic or whatever however they phrased it. So, uh so I I, I flat I was like um told them I was like, "Well, my insurance company disagrees with that." And she was like, well, that's fine. You can just leave it to the insurance companies and they can uh, basically decide it between the insurance companies. And I'm like, okay, that's fine with me. I will let you guys duke it out because, um, yeah. So basically, they don't want to pay even though their driver is liable for the uh, accident, which my insurance company um has already deemed that I am not liable so regardless my car will get fixed and I won't have to pay and it will come out of either my insurance company or theirs I will do I will work through my insurance do the claims process through my insurance and then they will probably go after the other insurance company um the other party's insurance to get reimbursed and they can duke it out from insurance company to insurance company and I don't have to worry about it because I will not be the middleman. That's what the insurance companies are there for. But I was just like, oh, good grief. But I was like, this is exactly what I wanted to have happen on the, what like, a week that I knew was going to be a busy week. I knew this week was going to be one of those, like, long weeks. But I was not expecting to have to deal with, you know. I don't, I don't know that anybody ever expects to have to deal with things like accident issues like this. That's never an expectation. But yeah, that was my, uh, that was my drama for the, uh, the week was the car accident. So now I can no longer say that I've never been in a car accident. And I'm like, seriously, I liked the fact that I had never been in a car accident. Like that was, that was something that I was proud of. 
Now I can no longer like say that I've never been in a car accident. <sighs> so that was Tuesday evening. And then I woke up on Wednesday and I went to work and I was like, my jaw was my right. So I kind of have some chronic like TMJ, like temporomandibular joint or jaw for anybody who's not aware, like jaw issues. And it basically mine is managed with like a lot of like mo activity modifications. So basically I don't chew like really chewy foods. I don't eat really hard foods and I don't chew gum ever. Uh, and that kind of manages my jaw issues and makes it so it very, very rarely ever flares up and gives me pain anymore. I've been able to sell, I've been able to treat it. I've got my exercises that I'll do when it does bother me as a physical therapist. Uh, I basically self-treat anything that goes wrong, musculoskeletal wise. So if it deals with muscles, bones, ligaments, I basically self-treat until it doesn't improve and then I break down and go see uh, a specialist. I never see primary care for anything uh, because, unlike, like musculoskeletal wise, because I have more training than they do on the musculoskeletal system. So usually it's only if it's outside of the scope of my practice do I go see primary care. Uh, so if it's muscles and bones and ligaments, I self-treat, which I shouldn't, but that's just me and what I do. Um, so I've been self-treating TMJ for years and I'm, I've gotten to the point where it's like I'm good to go for the most part unless I eat something that I shouldn't or chew something that I shouldn't. And then I'll be like sore and irritable for a few days uh, because it'll be tender and painful. And I'll be like, well, shouldn't have eaten that. Well, Wednesday I woke up and I was like, man, my jaw is like extremely ouchy. But I hadn't eaten anything yet because I don't usually eat breakfast. So it wasn't a big deal. And then uh, we had a um, someone brought in a box of Krispy Kremes to the clinic. And they were like those really, really fresh, really good Krispy Kremes. So they brought in those Krispy Kremes. And I ate a, I had a Krispy Kreme for like a late breakfast. It was like 10 o'clock or so. I had it, well, no, like 9 30, 10 o'clock, I had a Krispy Kreme. And it was really fresh, so super, super soft, like the most amazing, perfect Krispy Kreme ever. Um, that was like excruciatingly painful to eat that Krispy Kreme because my jaw hurt so bad to try to close my teeth and chew. So I was like, okay. And then I'm thinking, I'm like, why does my jaw hurt so bad? And then I was like, I was in a car accident yesterday. I think it's probably from the car accident, from the impact of the car accident. I think that's why my jaw hurts. I think that's got to be it. Because um, I was like, there's nothing else that could have been. So I took some meds, got myself back on track with my exercises uh it's better it's definitely much better it's still still painful but not nearly as sore as what it was it's a lot better than what it was for sure um and then I did um oh gosh oh and then Thursday yeah I woke up and my right wrist was like super tender and sore and I was like why is and then I was like oh yeah that's right i slammed my wrist into the steering wheel to yell at the or into the horn to you know voraciously yell at the idiot driver ahead of me who I was trying to avoid hitting so I was like slamming into the horn as I'm like turning the wheel to try to get out, out to avoid hitting this guy um and I already have you know a previous wrist injury that flares up every now and again. So yeah, I flared up my wrist. Uh, it's a little bit better today. I took, uh, I basically had stabilized it, taped it up, stabilized it as soon as it started hurting. Uh, and I just took the tape off a few hours ago because it was kind of calming down a little bit. Usually if I can catch it when it's super, super fresh like that, it doesn't take much to calm it back down again. It's when I ignore it that it flares up really, really bad. So proceeded to, uh, Notice that, yeah, so proceeded to have like pain in the wrist. My back has been tweaky just because of, you know, the car accident. And it's just been a weird tweakiness in my back. Like not my normal back pain, but like a weird tweaky back pain. 
Um, so that just will take a few more days for that to kind of continue to calm down. And then uh, I started noticing that my right hip was also sore as well. And I'm like, yeah, that would be from, you know, slamming on the brake with my right leg. And I'm just like, oh my goodness. I just, I like, I tell my patients all the time when they come in and see me after a motor, after like a car accident, that the fact that they're coming in and they're sore and they hurt, but it didn't start hurting until a couple days after the accident. I'm like, that's a good thing. You don't want to be hurting immediately after the crash uh, or the accident because that is a bad sign. Because that means that your pain is so bad that your your system is overriding the body's normal like um, response and protective mechanisms of adrenaline and everything else to let you know that you are in pain. That's what happens when you have the pain immediately upon the scene. That is a bad thing because it means that you you are really hurting and you it's a bad thing. You don't want to be in immediate pain at the scene of a car accident or a crash like that. You want to be like, oh no, I'm fine. Everything's good. Nothing hurts. That's a good thing. It means you're going to suck and hurt. A couple days later, you're going to be like, um, yeah, no, I don't feel very good. Everything hurts. Everything aches. My hip hurts. My wrist hurts. My back hurts. It all, my jaw hurts. It all hurts. And everything on the right side because of the way that, you know, the impact was to the left, which means you kind of go towards the right and get flung to the right. So, yeah. But I'm fine. Uh, I'm just complaining because I am can. I want to complain. <laughs> but no, I'm fine. Uh, no, real, no real injuries or anything like that. And I just have um, some minor damage. Nothing major, major on my car. It looks mostly like scuff marks with a little bit of denting. And then like this big, deep, deep metal dent. Uh, if it wasn't for that big, deep metal dent... I probably wouldn't even worry about getting my car repaired, but that big deep metal dent has to get repaired. Otherwise, my car, I'm going to have like rust all over my car and I don't want rust on my pretty green car because that's just not, no, let's not have rust on my pretty green car. <sighs> I love my little green car. It's such a fun car to drive. It's so pretty. So anyways, that was my excitement this week. And then uh, the rest of the the rest of the week has been just like business as usual, working wise. Uh, and the yeah, that's been about it for the biz, for work. Um, so we'll I guess we could just talk about diamond painting stuff because I feel like everything else, work wise, has been normal. Other than yeah, that. Uh, let's see, diamond painting wise, I've. As you guys obviously have seen, I am totally done with Lunar New Year Kitty. I did the post review and everything. And now I am working on other canvases. This week I did, uh, well, I kitted up um, on, in preparation for this being April, I kitted up this one, as you can see. So Familiar Magic has been kitted up and obviously I'm working on it. And then I also kitted up my Jada Jamboree, uh, uh, canvas, which I'm doing, um, I'm doing my, uh, Fierce Foo, my, my custom that I did, which is the Foo Dog from the, one of the temples. I think it's actually one that's at the Forbidden Palace in Beijing, I think is where that particular one is. But I did, I kitted up that one as well. Um, so I kitted up two kits that I plan on doing this month and I want to, so that's this one, which this is cruising. As you can see, I spent like two hours and like two forty five, two hours and 45 minutes to do that section there. Uh, and as you can see, I'm already cruising through. I always work slower when I'm doing my whip and chats for you guys. It always takes me longer to do a section with a whip and chat uh, during that first, you know, actual maybe 45 minutes of actual diamond painting time that I get uh, in my whip and chat. Um, it always goes a lot slower for that section that I work on. But I always calculate it as maybe 45 minutes of actual diamond painting time during a whip and chat. But I'm making really good progress if you look at how much I've gotten done so far in this first like 30 minutes or so. Um, 
and it's decent progress for this first portion of the the whip and chat um but yeah I will cruise through this canvas really quickly uh and that'll leave me to work on the uh my jaded gem shop custom that I want to do this month and I want to finish my enablers outpost super dragon uh this month that's the other whip that I want to finish this month so I've got those and I already finished one section this week on my um, Enablers Outpost Dragon. I already got a section done on that one. So I have three of 10 sections done on my uh, dragon. Uh, and now I've already got uh, one section done on this one and this one only has eight sections to get do. So I will, once I finish this section, my goal, by, well, I won't be able to work on this on Saturday, obviously, because I'm going to be on duty on Saturday. And I'll be at the hospital all day. But when I get home on Sunday, I'd like to be able to get to work on this. And I'll finish this section on Sunday. And my goal will be to do this section Sunday as well. So that means on by the end of Sunday, I will be three sections in three-eighths of the way through this kit. Which will be nice, because I this one's going to cruise. Uh, and then I will either continue working on this one, or I may decide to switch and pull out one of the other canvases um, that I'm working on. Either uh, continue working on Super Dragon or um, pull out my Gigi Jamboree kit and work on that one um, and kind of alternate back and forth between the three active whips that I've got. I've got uh, my Storm God from Lazy River kitted up and I want to work on that one, but I want to finish my other dragon canvas first before I start working on that one. So I really kind of want to finish. I don't want to have too many. It stresses me out having too many active whips going. It's already kind of stressing me out having this many things kitted up. Oh yes, because I also have my cross stitch conversion. Temperature, my temperature cell cross stitch conversion. That one is also um, kitted up and in progress. So technically that's four, four active uh, work in progresses that I've got going on. So yes, that's a lot for me. And I want to kind of like, you know, pace myself with it and not overwhelm myself and do too much. Uh, because, you know, you don't want, you don't want to do burnout. And I feel like I was kind of hovering at that burnout a little bit. It was more for like the health aspect of everything. But with Lunar New Year Kitty, I was definitely feeling some of that burnout coming on. But now that I'm done with Lunar New Year Kitty, I was working on Super Dragon and I was just like, it felt so totally different feeling working on Super Dragon than when I was doing Lunar New Year Kitty. I don't know why I just had like such a mental block and was struggling so much with Lunar New Year Kitty. But I definitely did not feel that way working on the last section that I did on Super Dragon, uh, or so far working on this one. Like I cruised through this, I'm cruising through here, and neither of these canvases that I'm act that I've worked on so far, um, yesterday and today, uh, or like this week really, neither of these can like none of these canvases have really felt like I'm actively, and even my cross stitch conversion that I've worked on earlier this week, none of them have felt like it's been a, a, a slog or anything to get through, which is perfect because I, I don't like it when something that I enjoy doing, I feel like I have to force myself to do and it's not enjoyable. And that's kind of what I was feeling like when I was working on Lunar New Year Kitty. It kind of got to that point where initially it was enjoyable, but I don't know. I just like, I had developed kind of a little bit of a block with that kit and it was getting to the point where I'm like, I'm not enjoying this, but I know I have to finish it. I need to get myself put through here and finish this kit. Uh, and that's why I kind of pushed myself through. I had to do it. I had to push through that mental block. Um, because otherwise, I probably would have been like, eh, I'm done kind of a thing. But I had to push through that mental block and force myself to work through that kit. And now that I have, I'm like, I feel like I'm back in my groove and back in my rhythm again. And I'm like cruising through... Um, the super dragon and I'm cruising through this one and I have to decide what uh 
I have to, what I want to do next. Like my actual next question is like, which kit do I want to take with me? What do I want to take with me to work tomorrow to work on? Because I've got the entire work day that of like the entire day, I've got a couple of things that I have to do work wise, but it's not going to take me the entire day. So I'm like, what am I going to do all day? Mm, like last on Sunday, I took a Mooney made kit with me and I did a Mooney made kit and that was my last finish of March. So I'm like, what do I want to, which kit do I want to take with me? I like taking the little snacks because they're literally the perfect size. I'm like, all right, what kind of a snack do I want to take this time around to do? Uh, do I want to take a round? Do I want to take a square? That's the question. And I don't know the answer to it yet. I have to decide soon because it's, you know, getting late and I need to pull the stuff out and put it in my bag if that's what I'm going to do. So that's got to gotta decide on that sooner rather than later. We're doing some sevens. We're going to go with some sevens. But yeah, I have to make that decision and decide which way am I going to go. Hmm. Because so we've got a couple different options. But I'm like, I feel like I kind of need to go with like the oldest. I've been forcing myself to not grab the newest kits uh, and kind of work through some of the older kits. Um, granted this one, I was between, I have two Chrissa bugs to do for that. And I was between doing this one or doing the other one that I have, which is Virgo. And I was like, well, I probably should just save Virgo for during my, uh, you know, during my actual birth month, because I'm a Virgo, which is why I have Virgo. So I was going to wait and do that one in August because I'm an August Virgo. So I think I'm going to do it then instead of doing Virgo now, which is why I went with this one. Also, this one was a smaller canvas and I wanted that smaller size because that felt, I don't know, I feel like I needed it after Lunar New Year Kitty because even though it was rounds, that kit just took so long. A big part of it was how much confetti was in there. It was an exorbitant amount of confetti um, and not, yeah, I don't know. It just, that kit, ugh. I need to stop talking about it. It's going to ruin my mood. But we are back on it and making good progress. Look at this. I'm just so amazed by how much faster this one is working up and going compared to the other. I mean, look at that. I'm almost like I'm totally going to finish this whole section of background during this whip and chat. Like that's how quickly this progress is going. Uh, we are just flying through this. Um, let's see. Purchases. Did I make any purchases last week? I think I did. What did I buy last week? Oh, I, I bought, um, did they, re which, what did they release? Oh, I talked about it. I think it was, what was it? Books and Nooks? Was that the one that they released last week? The you made that they released last week? I feel like the weeks and the days and everything are running together right now. Um, but I did purchase that one. Uh, and then... I do plan on buying the You May on for Saturday morning's release. So tomorrow's release because I'm filming this Friday night. I do plan on buying the You May because it's a You May. I have to buy it. Uh, I have all the You Mays. I love everything about You May art. You May's artwork. So I will be purchasing that one to add to my collection. And all of the Yume's for me are are basically like a rainy day kit. Um, so those special kits as a rainy day kit, as uh, Katie over at Diamonds and Washi always says. So basically they're those kits that you save for like a either a special occasion just because you needed something special or they're kits that have like a special meaning or they're kits that basically, yeah, they're, they're just there's something about the kit. And for me, those are Yume's, the Yume kits. They all are special and I'm not gonna just, yeah, I have to, I have to be in the right mood or frame of mind to work on a Yume. So I have them all. I just have not worked on, I've only worked on flower delivery. Those are the only ones that I've done. I think those are the only, yeah, those are the only Yume's that I've done, I think, are flower delivery. But... We are cruising along here. Okay, let's see. 
what else? So I will be making those. I did uh, order a couple uh, canvases from some new, a new to me budget uh, shop that I'm excited to try out uh, and see what my thoughts are on them because it's licensed work, but still kind of like at that lower end budget price. So I'm excited to try that out. So I'll have a video coming eventually about that. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Boop, boop, boop. All right. Let, I'm like, I'm in that like groove of diamond painting where I'm like, I don't even remember what else I wanna talk about. Um, so I've been pretty good about like not buying a ton of uh, accessories which is nice. So I've been good about not buying a bunch of those. So I don't have as many things for small shop hauls. I do actually have some boxes to unbox for a small shop haul now, uh, which is why my small shop hauls haven't been as robust or lately because I just haven't had packages to, to unbox um, because I've been trying to, you know, rein in my spending a little bit because I still have to do my taxes. I've been really slacking on that. I've got like a week to do taxes. Ugh. I don't want to do taxes. Ugh. But I have to do my taxes. Uh, and then I'm I'm like, I um, have to book my flight still. I have to book some flights and plan some things out. So uh, yeah, I've got some stuff. So I was been trying to be like a little bit more conservative in my spending lately which I've been doing a really good job at especially when you look at like my bank account number and I'm like ooh, I like that um so that's been going well with my spending uh, I'm definitely not doing as much purchases as what I had been doing even though I'll be like oh I spent more than I should have or I'll be like oh I bought this well those are still a significant reduction compared to what I was spending for a while there on all of my diamond painting, everything and everything else. So that has been good. I've been making progress. It's those small steady steps. That's what we want. Baby steps, making it there. We're getting good. Let's see, anything else that I have for you guys? Ooh, yeah. I, uh, the, uh, the Camilla, there's two other paintings on the for the releases that are going to happen on Saturday. There's two other paintings for the Saturday releases that I are, are really beautiful. The Margaret Morales one, that one's a beautiful one. Um I don't like it as much as her like the the two that I have from her like the the dragon one and the the two really I can never remember the th the names of them. But uh I got both of the other two really Asian-y feel ones. This one, it's like, yes, it's the blue, the blues of this one that's releasing Saturday, tomorrow, today, whatever day you're watching this. Um, they're, it's a very beautiful image, but it doesn't, and yes, it's like she's wearing, the figure is wearing a kimono, but I feel like it doesn't have the really like Japanese aesthetic or that Asian aesthetic that I like in my images. So it's kind of like, I feel like it's like a Western figure that has a kimono slapped on her. Uh, so that's kind of what it feels like to me. So I was like, mm, I don't know if I like that one as much as the other images that she's put out. And that's just my opinion of the art piece. Everybody, like some people will absolutely love it. I still feel like it's an absolutely beautiful image, but I don't think it's, it's not one that I'm going to actually buy as a diamond painting. That's going to be one that I'm going to pass on. Just like I passed on Satura, which ever like a lot of people raved about Satura and they really really liked Satura. And I was like, yeah, it's a pretty image, but it wasn't it's not my style. So everybody has their style and what they like. And that's what makes everything awesome is seeing everybody's differences. Cuz if everybody liked the same thing and everybody did the same thing, and life would be boring. I feel like I'm rambling now. Happens when you're tired, you realize you're like, am I even like I was this is what it like my sleep deprivation stage where I start talking and I'm like, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Or like you start talking and you're like your brain and your mouth are operating at two different speeds. 
And that's what I feel like I'm doing right now. This is what my brain has been doing for the past like month, basically, where I'm like, okay, am I like, I have to catch up to what my brain is saying. And I'm like, okay, is this make sense? I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. We will see. Yeah. If it's a confused jumble of everything, I apologize. Uh, my brain has not been operating at its maximal capacity due to my consistent lack of sleep that I have been exper experiencing lately. <sighs> but oh well. All right. Let's see. Uh, I am trying to get back on track uh, with my controlled purchases. Uh, I'm not doing well with the whole finish X by X that I was aiming for, but I am being much more conscientious in my purchases. So that's something that I am doing. I'm trying to be much more conscientious about the purchases that I do make, uh, which that is a big part of it. And that is helping for sure, uh, because I have bought significantly less than I normally, than what I was doing uh, last year. So that's huge. And I want to now start to see my numbers in my hoard start to go down instead of up, which means I need to finish more kits to get those numbers to go down and not buy more than what I finish, which is why you should be doing like a, why I should be doing a finish X by X a finish X by Y and have that number of Y be smaller than X. So X has to be greater than Y. So basically you have to finish more than you can buy. So then you're always downsizing your hoard and having fewer and fewer canvases. That's the goal anyways. So we will see if it actually happens or not, but that's the goal. That's the goal. <sighs> but I should probably, like at this point, I'm like, okay, I feel like I've run out of things to say to you guys tonight. That's like, this will be a short one for you all. I was trying to finish this whole section in time, but I don't think I'm going to finish that whole section before the end of this video, considering the fact that I think I have run out of steam on things to say, which is like a first for me. I never run out of things to say to you guys. Um, but again, like I said, I do not feel like I am operating on all cylinders right now. If I was a a uh, little four-cylinder car, I would be probably operating on three cylinders at the moment uh, as far as my uh, fully functioning capacity uh, at the moment. So yes, we are going to go ahead and call it here. Ooh, perfect timing because I did finish that color. So let me go ahead and take care of those drills and I will turn off the light pad so we can see the colors actually bling and shine at us. Let's see, we're gonna use T is gonna be our next color to fill that one. But let's go ahead and see our progress. Boom, ooh, look at how pretty that is. So I just have that one section right here and then the whole background will have been done and we will have been able to start into her hair and her face and all of the above. But I love the colors on this. This is working up really fast and it is looking beautiful. So I love it. Uh, it's a dream to work on. Highly, highly, highly recommend uh, any of the Chrysabug kits. They turn out beautiful. And I love the fact that um, they usually come out in rounds. I don't know if any of them have come out in anything but round. But they usually come out in rounds. And they look really good when they're done. Uh, this will be my first one that I will have done. But I had a bunch in my stash. Uh, and then I ended up de-stashing some of them because I decided I didn't want to actually do the full Zodiac series. But anyways, that's enough rambling. I could just keep going down rabbit trails. We're going to call that good for today. Let me cover my canvas back up with the plastic and boom, we will be done. All right. Have a great day, everybody. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend and make all good choices. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.